Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here and for your continued coverage. Uh, obviously, we have some good news to report today as it relates to Hurricane Sally, and that is that the track has continued to shift eastward. That really has been the case uh, since Sunday morning when, when it looked like uh, the greater New Orleans metro area was in line for a direct hit from Sally. Every subsequent revision for the forecast has been beneficial to us, uh, of course, not beneficial to our neighbors in Mississippi and Alabama. Uh, so the good news is today is that with that shifted track, Hurricane Sally will have less of an impact in Louisiana, much less of an impact than we uh, suspected about 48 hours ago. Uh, all of the previously anticipated rain totals have dramatically decreased. The, the expected wind has decreased uh, tremendously as well. Uh, the primary concern that we have now is flooding in low lighting areas in extreme southeast Louisiana because of storm surge. Um, and high tide is right now. Uh, and we know that water, uh, for example, is a problem with storm surge in Grand Isle coming from the bay side, but also in St. Bernard Parish and a few other uh, places as well. But all in all, we'll, we'll take uh, the, the uh, storm as she is rather than the one that was forecasted a couple of days ago. A total of 404 floodgates in the coastal zone up from 294 have been closed um, as of this morning. All hurricane risk reduction structures in the greater New Orleans area are performing as expected. The Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority is assisting St. Bernard Parish with flood fighting efforts in the Delacroix area. They're working the Sandbag Highway 300, yeah, Highway 300 along the bayou, and they're actively pumping down the canals in the event that the highway is overtopped. As I mentioned, Grand Isle is getting order from the back or the north side of the island. Uh, the CPRA has two pumps on the island that are staged on high ground and another nine pumps uh, staged nearby, which will be delivered as soon as the mayor calls for them. The bad news for our neighbors uh, in Mississippi and Alabama is that Sally is very slow moving uh, and she has turned and set her sights on the Mississippi and Alabama Gulf Coast. Um, she won't make uh, landfall uh, until sometime tomorrow. So she is a very slow moving storm that's going to drop a lot of rain, uh, have significant storm surge on the Gulf Coast there, uh, and she has 80 mile per hour sustained winds. Uh, I don't believe that the current forecast uh, anticipates that the storm will strengthen uh, beyond the category one. So as we are able, we're transitioning our focus to doing what we can to help our neighbors in Mississippi and Alabama, in addition to continuing Hurricane Laura recovery efforts. Uh, and making sure that we resume all of our COVID testing and other COVID related activities. I did have the opportunity this morning to speak with Governor Kay Ivey of Alabama and conveyed to her the same message that I gave to the Mississippi governor yesterday, uh, Tate Reeves, and that is that we stand ready to assist. And in fact, some of the federal search and rescue assets that FEMA brought into Louisiana have already been directed to Anniston, Alabama. Uh, to help with any search and rescue that will need to happen there. Uh, tomorrow, all of the state offices um, closed because of Sally will be reopened. There will only be three parishes with state office closures tomorrow. All relate back to Hurricane Laura and principally remain closed because of uh, continued power outages, but those are Beauregard, Calcasieu, and Cameron parishes. Um, GOSEP has put in a request to extend registration for the Blue Roof program until the, the end of the month. Uh, I encourage everyone who is eligible to take advantage of this program uh, and don't assume that the extension will be granted. Uh, right now, the program is authorized through September the 21st. And so there are several parishes where uh, residents are eligible for the Blue Roof. I'm going to name those parishes. Uh, they are Allen, Beauregard, Calcasieu, Cameron, Jefferson Davis, and Vernon. Uh, so if you're a homeowner there and you've got roof damage, uh, please make sure you take advantage of this program. Again, we hope it will be extended till September the 30th, but right now September 21st is the deadline. 
call 888-766-3258 in order to register. That's 888-ROOF-BLUE, B-O-U. Today, the Ag Center reported that they estimate ag and forestry losses uh, related to Hurricane Laura exceed $1.6 billion. That is a significant total. Uh, this is one of the costliest storms to agriculture that we have had as a result of that damage estimate. About $525 million of that total is estimated uh, damages to Louisiana's farmers, uh, crop damage. The rest, uh, about $1.1 billion, is estimated losses uh, for the timber industry due to damaged um, acreage of timber to varying degrees uh, from southwest Louisiana all the way up to the northeastern parts of the state, more than 750,000 acres in total. Uh, as of this morning, we have 12,537 individuals being sheltered in the state from Hurricane Laura. The vast majority of these are uh, sheltered in the New Orleans area. All are non-congregant, except for just a handful in the Alexandria mega shelter and they only stay there until they can be transitioned into a non-congregant shelter. Additionally, there are about 5,300 uh, individuals sheltering in Texas still, uh, and Texas officials have begun consolidating the hotels uh, where Louisianans can continue to shelter uh, through the resident transition process. So Louisiana residents in Texas who still need shelter or asked to call 1-888-991-5229. That's 1-888-991-5229. And they will be asked uh, for their parish of residence and maybe more specific uh, addresses for, for their residences. And, and they'll be allowed to, to register for continued sheltering if they are eligible. Anyone not eligible for continued sheltering and who can return home, meaning they don't have major damages to their home uh, and basic services like water and sewer uh, have been restored, uh, they are being asked to do that, to, to come on back uh, to Louisiana at this point. But if you're in Texas uh, and you're from one of these heavily damaged areas and, it's, and you're not eligible to return, uh, please make sure that you call 1-888-991-5229 to register for uh, continued non-congregant sheltering in hotels there in Texas. The American Red Cross, DCFS, FEMA, uh, HUD, uh, and the Louisiana Housing Authority and other partners uh, are working with families and individuals who need help to recover to determine both short and long-term housing options. Uh, DCFS is now taking DSNAP applications for the first nine of 18 parishes who have been approved. I will remind you this is a virtual DSNAP process. Uh, first time we've done this in Louisiana, but it makes tremendous sense for a couple of reasons. Uh, we've got the 5,300 or so people in Texas uh, who may be eligible for a nutrition assistance through DSNAP, uh, and they don't have to come back to Louisiana to a fixed site in order to apply, but also because of COVID, uh, it's very helpful that individuals can apply without having to go to a fixed site. It also allows us to use our state police officers and National Guardsmen to continue to do other missions as well as opposed to working those sites with DCFS. Um, with this virtual DSNAP, um, the individuals uh, who are eligible are from the, the nine uh, phase one parishes uh, presently, uh, and they include Acadia, Allen, Beauregard, Calcasieu, Cameron, Jefferson Davis, Rapides, Vermilion, and Vernon Parishes. And today and tomorrow, everyone, regardless of the first letter of their last name, can call in order to uh, apply for DSNAP. And the, the number to call is 1-888-LA-HELP-U. Uh, they can call between 7.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Uh, thus far, more than 21,500 households have applied and more than $7.2 million in DSNAP benefits have been issued. 
And I'd remind everybody that if you pre-registered, that's great, but you still have to call in uh, and, and actually apply to make sure that you are eligible. And so that if you are eligible, that you will get your card. So don't wait, thinking that uh, they're gonna call you because you registered, uh, you still have to call in order to apply. And you can get more information on DSNAP at dcfs.la.gov slash DSNAP. Uh, moving to COVID now, today we're reporting 426 new cases of COVID-19 in Louisiana on 12,659 new tests. Unfortunately, we're also reporting 26 additional deaths today. That brings the number of deaths to 5,108. There are three new hospitalizations today for a total of 667, and the number of people on ventilators has dropped by six to 99. Uh, that's the first time in two weeks we've had uh, a, an increase in the number of people hospitalized although it was, it was a very small increase of three, and obviously we're concerned about that because we're, we're getting uh, close to that two weeks after the Labor Day activities, um, and we hopeful, we're hopeful that we don't see the kind of surge that we saw after Memorial Day, and certainly one day does not a trend make, but that's something that we're watching uh, very, very carefully. Uh, I, will, I will tell you that there's still obviously a lot of COVID in Louisiana, uh, and a number of individuals still in the hospital and, and so forth. So we do encourage everyone uh, to make sure that you adhere to the restrictions, adhere to the mitigation measures, and that is wear a mask or other face covering, wash your hands frequently, stay home when you're sick, and be physically distanced from individuals who are not part of your household. Uh, and also make sure that we're more careful with uh, the vulnerable, and I want the vulnerable to make sure that they're exercising caution. So if you're 65 or older, or if you have those preconditions, uh, those health preconditions that uh, make you more vulnerable, please be mindful of that. So at this time, we're gonna uh, pause and take a few questions, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, certainly you always use the National Weather Service forecast. Um, and, and that forecast uh, became much more dire on Saturday for us. Uh, and that continued really through um, Sunday morning. Uh, it was the subsequent uh, forecast revisions after that that started moving the storm uh, to the east. Uh, and quite frankly, we're thankful uh, for that. Um, and because we know it's a slow moving storm that's gonna drop a lot of rain, push a lot of storm surge. Uh, and, and of course the wind damage is, is uh, also to be expected because it does have 80 mile per hour sustained winds. So we're, we're thankful for that. Um, you know, obviously uh, the information that we are going to impart to people, the decisions we make uh, are gonna be based on the forecast. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, all of the information that we put forward uh, was the best we had available to us at the time. It's just the facts change sometimes. And, you know, you have multiple things that, that impact a storm in its track. Um, we know we had a high pressure system over the Tennessee Valley and a very slow moving storm. And the question became, uh, where would those two things be in relation to one another when they came into contact? Um, and of course the National Weather Service does the best job that it can uh, in, in making these forecasts. Uh, but I, I for one am, am thankful um, and you know, I know that uh, while we benefited from the changes over the last 36 hours or so, um, the states of Mississippi and Alabama did not. And so we're, we're certainly mindful of that and we're gonna do everything we can to help those two states. Any other questions? Okay, yes, sir. Um, so there's a report in the LA Charlotte area of pilots and landlords um, evicting residents because of Hurricane Laura. Uh, in a similar way, in the Hockley Laura, Pasadena, where because of the hurricane, residents be evicted and then um, the apartments are renovated and the reseller knows they're tenants. Mm -hmm. um,
Yeah. Well, obviously, we, we would hope that they wouldn't do that. I haven't received that report. Um, assuming it's correct, uh, we obviously don't want to create housing problems for, for individuals who actually have uh, intact residences where, that they can live in, and that certainly applies if they're renters uh, and, and a renting space. And, and so uh, would ask them obviously not to do that and to honor the contractual obligations that they have uh, with uh, their tenants uh, and not create a, a bigger problem than we already have because the damage there uh, to the housing stock is already extremely substantial. Uh, and we also had a number of apartment buildings that were themselves damaged to the point where, where renters can't live there, um, not, not that they're being uh, evicted in that situation, but they just can't safely live there uh, because of the damage. And so we're, we're trying to find housing solutions. We certainly are not looking to create more housing uh, problems. And so we would ask if those uh, landlords not engage in that, um, and obviously it's something I'm going to ask people uh, to look into because I have not received uh, that report. Yes. Um, so look, uh, tomorrow I've got a um, uh, my radio show. We won't be scheduling uh, a another press conference tomorrow. Uh, we will let you know when, if later in the week, we're going to have a press availability. I think we're going to get back to doing press availabilities once or maybe twice a week uh, now, uh, unless something unforeseen happens with respect to Sally or, or um, with, with COVID or, or whatever. But we're going to try to get back to about a once a week uh, press availability. We'll let you know when that's going to be, but we know it will not be tomorrow because of the radio program. So thank you all for continuing to, to cover this. And I want to thank all the members of my team who have been working so hard, Chip Klein, uh, General Waddell, Colonel Reeves. Uh, thank, thank you so much, uh, and we will see you all later.